Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us tonight, Thursday night, uh, the 12th of September. Uh, here the last one for our regular Thursday night Zoom fellowship. We have an exciting speaker tonight, and I'm going to get to her here in just a second. I first want to just say a couple of things. Um, thank you all for the wonderful uh, responses to the pictures of our new little granddaughter that was born yesterday, I guess. No, the day before, born on the 10th. Wow. Uh, Mom and baby are doing pretty good. Baby has a little problem uh, that they have to meet with some specialists on. Oh. And, uh, but it's, it, it's not a life-threatening problem. It's just a, it's a, she's got a blockage from whatever that goes to her kidney, one of her kidneys. And so they got to figure it out. Yeah. But uh, it's not a, not a life-threatening thing. So I appreciate all that. Most importantly, you guys got to get on board, men too, for the uh, <clears throat> conference or the webinar coming up, uh, which is inspiring women. Uh, and it's just, a, it's the lineup is incredible. And it's, it, while it's a women's conference, guys, you know, these are women that are all doing the deal for the kingdom. They've all gone through stuff and they've come out the other side. So mm -hmm. you want to get on board with that. Just simply go to hear the watch men, M -E -N .com, uh, and get signed up now. It's only $39. Uh, and it's the, wow. a lot of different presentations. Plus on Sunday, there's a live uh, Q and a session. All of it, you know, is recorded. And once you, mm -hmm. have it, you have it forever. So, uh, get on board. One of the presenters is here tonight with us. It's uh, Lisa Keys Fresquez. Did I say that right? <laughs> Fresquez, but that's good. That's Fresquez. how I used okay. to pronounce it. <laughs> I was trying to practice it like, like you know, for an hour. Really, anyway. But anyway, Lisa, uh, we met and and she's uh, she's just uh, doing a great job. She's an author and a speaker. This is, I don't know if you guys can see this. No, because I have a background. So anyway, uh, her prayer manual, deliverance prayer manual, setting captives free is insane. And so uh, I asked Lisa to come on tonight and share with us a little bit about what's going on and, and where she's at. So Lisa, I'm turning it over to you. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you for that gracious introduction and a real honor. I want to thank everybody for coming online and taking time to be here as a family, as the body of Christ. I really appreciate it very much. I know time is valuable. I feel like the Lord, I feel like I know the Lord gave me a message. Um, it's called Get Your House in Order. And I know that sounds pretty strong. But let me dissect it for you. And I am trusting as I've been praying for this uh, forward day now, praying in the spirit, praying for everybody who's coming on, praying for everybody um, that might listen to it later, that there's going to be rhema words, nuggets, golden nuggets from heaven for each and every one of you on this. So I woke up one morning. I'm going to tell you how I got this from the Holy Spirit. Get your house in order. And of course, that can uh, kind of shake you up and you're like, okay, Lord, what does that mean? You know, and, um, you know, there's a lot on the internet about, you know, preparation, if you will, and, and for hard times and getting water and getting food. And, and that's not going to be the, me my message tonight. I, I don't have anything against that. I think everybody needs to be led of the Lord on that and, pre and prepare um, and be wise, you know, in regards to that for, you know, if the grid goes down for a week or two and, and making sure that you have supplies and all that, I think that's just being, being wise. But that, as I started seeking the Lord, that was not where he was directing me. I had asked for a confirmation and I'm sure like many of you, when you hear things, you're like, oh, did I hear you right? And, you know, how does that apply to me? And, you know, when I talk to the, to the body of Christ, the remnant, you know, what does that mean? And um, probably many of you have done, you're, you're kind of 
in a moment where, Lord, Lord, I just want to hear a now word, you know, and you might be scrolling through the YouTube and you have favorites that you like to listen to. And there were two, what I would call unknowns, meaning I've never heard of them. And do you know that the title of the, their message was get your house in order? I was like, wow, Holy Spirit. So I had listened to one of them for a few minutes and I felt like the Lord was like, shut it down because it would interfere with what the download the Lord wanted to give me personally. So that's what I want to share with you guys tonight. And on that note, on getting your house in order, the, the side um, title would be, there is a Goshen. There is a spiritual Goshen for you, for me, for, for all of us, for the remnant. So when I think about a spiritual Goshen, so I started looking up. So we, many of you are probably familiar and, and you know, we're not going to go into a long detail story. I know most of us are seasoned believers probably here and you're the remnant, but I just want to um, uh, center in on this one scripture right now, which is Genesis 46, six. And it says in the land of Egypt is before you settle your father and your brothers in the best part of the land. Let them live in Goshen. So we know that the Lord took the Israelites. We know the story. He brought them out of Egypt. And as he was bringing them out, he brought them in the edge of Goshen to separate them from the coming judgments, right? Well, when you break down Goshen, Goshen means to draw near. And the Lord began to tell me that he's putting a, he's been putting a clarion call out to the body of Christ to draw near to him like never before. And so in the times of chaos and uncertainty, we're hearing warnings. Many of God's messengers are putting warnings out there. But the focus has got to be the internal part of the kingdom of God being built within us. That internal part of what the Lord wants to do with us in regards to getting our house in order, getting us in order, preparing us mentally, emotionally, and of course, also, you know, the biggest part is spiritually. In 2 Timothy 3, 1, we hear about that there is perilous times that are going to come. So we're not meant to be off guard. We're meant to be sober. We're meant to be alert. We're meant to be looking. But at the same time, Goshen was the best part of the land. They were provided for, right? They had peace. They were protected. All of that. So the Lord said, it's going to be a time for my people to stand out during this time. If we'll allow the Lord. So in other words, in Exodus 9, 26, you know, all the plagues that touch Egypt did not touch God's protected people. And I believe that we're entering into a season where we are absolutely going to shine out and we, and the judgments and the plagues, it's not for the remnant. It's for the world. It's to get the world out there to get their notice, to get them to, to wake up. So we need to remember to focus that not on all the world's calamity. I mean, there are times that I'll go out there and I'll listen to what's going on, or I might listen not to the fake news, but other, other news alternatives. And after a while, the Lord will be like, shut her down. You know, like in other words, it's good to be aware but if it, if it takes your focus, if you are losing your peace, if you're putting so much attention on that, and that's going to get you in fear and worry, and or if you're in a season where we're going to talk about God wanting to really build you up spiritually, are you meant to put constant focus of what's going on in the world, other than for the purpose, and the main purpose, of course, is so we can pray, right? We need to be praying for all that's going on. So hopefully, that we can, you know, for God to, for us to humble ourselves, God to start healing the land and maybe, maybe some of the judgments that are coming, the blows won't be so hard. So when he talked to me about building a spiritual Goshen and about, you know, God preserves his people in famine. He preserves them in disasters. We're in a time where he's separate, separating the sheep and the goats during this time, right? And so it's a time to put our trust in God and realizing that each and every person that's on this podcast, all I believe we're coming to a time that it's very near of the coming of the Lord. 
And we know we've heard that times past and I think people's hearts get hardened and or, oh my gosh, we've heard that before. We've heard that over and over again, but we really are seeing biblical signs like never before that we're in that window. We're in that season, I believe, of the coming of the Lord. I call it the 12th hour ministry. That's what the Lord gave me. He said, people who are alive right now, and those of us were all called on this podcast, every one of us are in ministry, period. We're all in ministry, is that it's a 12th hour ministry, which means the Lord's got anointing. He's got empowerment. He's got everything that we need. If we will take the time, he's giving me four things that we're going to break down of some keys to begin to prepare and, and what that looks like spiritually to get your house in order. So let me get to some of those here. So it's important for us to remember whose we are and that we are God's possession. That's exactly what he shared with me. You on the podcast, you are God's possession. You're owned by him. And that in Psalm 32, seven, it says, Lord, you are my hiding place. You protect me from trouble and you surround me with songs of deliverance. So I'm going to stop there and I'm going to share with you something that happened to me many, many years ago. I had been a widow at 27 years old. I had two children that I was raising, two young girl, girls. And um, I I had, um, it, I can't even tell you, I just was really in kind of a fog, if you will. And it, it had been um, a few months. I had to sell the, the house I was living in and move in an apartment. Um, there was no preparation for me, no life insurance. I had to scramble and get a job. I'd been raising my kids. Well, anyway, it was my daughter Erica's, I think it would have been her fourth or fifth birthday. Well, she's 38 now. <laughs> so there's a lot of math in between that. Um, but we're, I'll never forget, we're in a Dairy Queen. And I and I see this man for her birthday, I see this man staring, like not a good staring, you know, and where you feel really uncomfortable and you're being watched. So I took note of that, but, you know, went back home. Well, in the following week, I would hear rattling on the front door. Um, I would see a par car parked out in front of my apartment. I was living in a very kind of low income apartment building and it was upstairs and there were these metal stairs. And, and um, I remember the, the door, I remember telling the landlord it was partly glass and it was a pretty big piece of glass and then the rest, you know, steel or iron or whatever would. And I remember telling him I felt unsafe as a single woman. Nothing was ever done about it. And I think they ended up putting another deadbolt, but nothing like exchanging the door out. So what I want to share with you, I, I, I'm super careful when I share this next supernatural event that I had with God is, um, you know, you hear people talk about angelic experiences. And I think some people can, especially if they're like, oh, I talked to an angel and they go on to this big grandiose story. Um, I've had three angelic encounters in my walk with the Lord over the years. This was my first one. And it was, uh, I was woken up in the middle of, of the night around two, three o'clock in the morning. And I heard rattling at my front door again. And my heart was just pounding. And I uh, remember crying out to Jesus, just Jesus, help me, help me. I had such fear that was gripping me. And all of a sudden this bright light from the ceiling and in my mind's eye, I had a quick vision, maybe a couple seconds of an angelic, like, like armor and this flaming sword. And, it, and I remember hitting the deck. I remember this fear, not like fear of being afraid, but this shock and awe fear that I couldn't even look up. All of a sudden, I hear this squealing of a car, like racing to get, you know, get out of the neighborhood. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like, did that just happen to me? I'm trying to digest what had happened to me. And I had heard stories, you know, um, about, you know, there was a book back in the eighties of angelic stories and people who had entertained angels unaware and things of that nature. And, um, I personally believe that I absolutely had an angelic encounter 
that the Lord had intervened. He had sent one of his messengers. I was in trouble. So when I got to work the next day, um, I had worked for Estee Lauder at the time and one of the cosmetic managers came in and she could tell I was really, really shook up. She could see it all over my face. And she had been dating a police officer and I began to tell her my story. And she said, um, you know, let's check on this and see if the, you know, I'm going to check with, you know, my boyfriend, have him check some things out. And I remember the bake of the car. I never did get the license plate, but I remember even from Dairy Queen watching, leaving um, Dairy Queen to go to my house and, and seeing that I was being followed and taking note of the car. Well, long story short, um, there was somebody who had gotten out of jail. This man had gotten out of jail. They were able to find him. Um, he had raped. He was in jail for raping a woman. And anyway, these police officers went and visited him and, and found him. And, you know, how miraculous is that? And so I share that story to really be encouragement. I mean, God gives us Psalm 91, but we have to, we have to, we have to own that scripture and, and add our faith to that and believe that God, that that is our, that's part of our protection. Those that dwell in the secret place and make the Lord the most high. And so during this time, I believe there is going to be such angelic intervention for God's people like never before. And so the Lord said we needed to remember that we are God's possession and that he delivers us out of any kind of trouble. It says we may have many troubles, right? But the Lord has promised to deliver us out of trouble. So we need to be really mindful of that, that no matter what comes, you know, I could tell many, many stories um, about that, of how the Lord has delivered me from various different kinds of trouble. The other is um, praying in the Holy Spirit and upping your prayer time. I've heard that over and over from different um, God's ministers. So if, if you spend a half an hour, an hour a day, we really need to up our time. I mean, I don't know if you noticed in the last week or two, the spiritual warfare, um, I'm hearing from other intercessors lately that they're like, oh my gosh. I mean, even my girlfriend said, the other day she was in a Walmart and she saw this woman going over all the Halloween candy and just putting her hand like this all over the Halloween candy. And she said, I know that the Lord allowed me to see that and alerted me so I could pray and counsel. So she went back to her church and said, we need to come against witchcraft curses and break that, you know, over the kids and the candy and all of that. Um, I've just had bizarre things. I know Mike and, and them technical issues with the computer. I mean, um, I've had people um, from family members to even my clients be just like sharper and snarkier. And, and there just seems to be this um, chaotic um, distress, kind of like if you could, you know, in the atmosphere, if you will. And, and we need to really guard against that and, and, and guard our hearts and our spirits against um, participating in that. We have a peace that God has promised us, not like the world gives. So I think um, it's super important to ask the Holy Spirit, how much time should I up my prayer time? You know, and if you don't have the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I hope I'm not stepping on any toes. I'm a I believe everybody's meant to have that gift. And I believe that gift is to empower us individually and to empower us to build our faith up. And the Holy Spirit knows how to um, build that sensitivity and alert us. So there's been times I'm getting ready to go to the store or go, you know, grocery shopping or what have you. And I've had the times where the Lord said, not today. I don't want you to go out today. So I'll arrange my schedule and I hear him say, I want you to go out tomorrow. This is a time to have such keen sensitivity about where you're going, doing errands, things of that nature, and just being more alert and aware of your surroundings. The Holy Spirit wants to guide us. He wants to direct us. It says the steps of the righteous are ordered of the Lord. And we need to believe that and allow him to interrupt your schedule. Maybe you have plans to do something and 
And oftentimes he may not tell us, he doesn't have to, you know, but he's doing it for our good and for our safety. Uh, so I really want to encourage you, ask the Holy Spirit, how much more time do I need to up my prayer time? you know, with the, with the Holy Spirit so that we can be strengthened and increase our sensitivity. You know, Jude 1, 20, 24 said, that's how we, that's how we strengthen and build up ourselves in our most holy faith. The other is um, declaring God's word out of your mouth. You know, that they, they said in 2020, the prophets right out of 2020, you know, the, the year of that is the pay which means in Hebrew, you know, it's, it's the year and the decade of the mouth. And the more that we watch what comes out of our mouth and the more that we believe what we say and how powerful God's word is, he says he watches Isaiah 55, 11 over his word to perform it. And, you know, I, I'm, you know, like when I say Psalm 91, you know, we don't want to kind of be doing it where it ends up being like, we're just going through the motions, but like remembering, you know, that's my inheritance. That's my covenant right um, to declare God's protection. We know that Mike Kerr recently was in a car accident. And I think Jeannie and Mike probably have shared with you guys how much God's divine hand was on that and his protection was on that. You know, that's incredible. And that should build our build our faith up, you know, in, in the fact that God is our refuge and he is our fortress. And so if, if you're battling, I know during 2020, there was a time for a couple of weeks when I first heard about, you know, the C word and some people call it the scam pandemic, but at any rate, the, 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 the virus and all of that, you know, fear, you know, that was a real checkup to check in and see, you know, with yourself, how did you react? you know, to all of that. And, and many people were so gripped by fear. I mean, they were so gripped. And I thank you, sister, for putting that up there, Jeannie. Yeah, it's the decade of the mouth. Yes. And where everybody was <clears throat> wearing a mask because the enemy wants to shut us up. That was really good, Jeannie. Thank you for that. And so we need to remember our mouth is a weapon. Our mouth is a weapon. And so it's so important. So if you're having you know, battles, you know, with, you know, whether it be financially, worry, uncertainty. Some people, you know, when I talk to some of my clients about even preparing for maybe a few weeks or a month or two months of food and water, they get kind of worked up about that. And some people are from literally from paycheck to paycheck. And when I first came to the Lord, um, my father had passed away and I was not talking to my mom at the time. And, um, I had lost a job. I, um, I didn't know how I was going to make rent. I didn't know how I was going to make payment. I had just come to know the Lord. I didn't even have a Bible. My, my, um, convert my conversion, my salvation, my, um, my encounter with the Lord was so dramatic. And if you knew my whole story, um, the Lord must have known it needed to be dramatic. <laughs> the pot smoker that I was and reading tarot cards and, very much into the new age and all of that. And, and I had really tanked and um, a neighbor had heard about, um, you know, I was struggling for food and this one lady brought me, I think it was well over a couple dozen jars of peaches. And I remember being so thankful, <laughs> but about after two weeks of eating peaches, I'm like, yeah, I think I'm done with peaches now. <laughs> but, you know, it makes me think of the children of Israel when they were given manna. And after a while, you know, they were complaining to God, like, okay, can we have something else to eat here? But um, the point I want to make is that God, we serve a supernatural God and he absolutely will provide for us. You know, a raven brought food to Elijah. And so we need to build our faith muscles up that absolutely God is going to provide for us. And, and so just, you know, please keep that to the forefront of your mind. And remembering that Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so I know some of this may seem, what's the word, elementary, but at the same token, sometimes we can get so, um, what's the word? Uh, mature sometimes in our walk with the Lord that we can forget the elementary things. I don't know about you, but it's happened to me 
where we just are not mindful of the moment of just the simplicity of some of the simple things, you know, that, that we can do and what God has promised for each and every one of us. Uh, number four, then other, the, other, the other one, declaring God's word out of your mouth was number three. And number four is getting into the secret place. So I, a lot of us have a lot that we juggle and it takes discipline to be quiet. And um, if you struggle <laughs> with that, you know, that, uh, what is that, that hamster in the wheel and, and quieting yourself, you know, sometimes I started out doing 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and I'm up to an hour where I can sit quietly before the Lord and not get fidgety at all. And just put some easy, quiet, um, instrumental Christian music on. This is so critical. When we're quiet before the Lord, we can quiet our soul. With all the stuff that's going out there, how are we going to hear from the, from the Lord on what areas he wants us to get our house in order if we're not taking any quiet time to be with him? I can't say enough about that. That is so critical, as well as that's a time where there's that divine exchange. Yeah, the hamster jam. I like that. Good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we we want to unjam that that hamster wheel. And so as you practice, because your your spirit, man, as it gets built up and used to being quiet with the Lord and experiencing his presence, he's going to remove. Um, he's going to remove all the things that are hindering you from walking in his peace, from walking in his confidence. You know, the Lord, it ministers to his heart when we show that we trust him. He wants us to show that we believe in him and that we trust him. So being in that quiet place is so, so imperative right now because the Lord wants to give each and every one of you downloads. He wants to give you strategy because for each person, it's going to be different on how you prepare. You know, what he's going to tell one person he might have not have the other person, you know, um, it just really depends where each person lives. And then I have people get back to me like, well, I live in the city or, you know, I live in an area that seems to be maybe it might be dangerous in the future. And again, I want to admonish you, you know, you are at the right place. If God has you in the city, if he has you in apartment building, um, Wherever he has you, whatever state that he has you in, it's so purposeful, very, very purposeful. That's your Goshen, wherever God sends you. Like the Lord sent me and my husband here to Kentucky. We didn't know anybody. I mean, four years ago, the Lord began to speak to us and said, will you go anywhere? I mean, I have seven grandchildren. I was close to several of them within 15 minute drive, um, babysat some of them. I had a thriving practice. We had just remodeled the house and we were just ready to hunker down, you know, and live life. And, and God said, I, I need you in Kentucky. And we're like, you gotta be kidding me, especially with being older and mature. You know, you always think about, oh man, maybe I'll retire in Florida. Or I'll go retire somewhere warm. And it was like, my clients were like, what? <laughs> Kentucky? Why would God send you to Kentucky? You know? But my point is, is that wherever God has you, that is your, that, that's your, that's your place of protection. Um, recently, one of my um, girlfriends and her husband, um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Estes Park. It's pretty famous there in um, about an hour, hour and a half outside of Denver, Colorado, where we are originally from. So it's a great destination place. And they had a cabin up there. And um, she had called me frantic because they had fires, like major, major fires. And um, they were evacuating. In fact, it took two weeks to get this fire um, containable. And it was very, very dry in the hundreds. This was a couple of months ago or a month and a half ago. And it had been in the high hundreds for quite some time. And she said, will you pray? And so we just start praying and commissioning, asking the Lord for his angels. Do you know that on her block where the cabins, there were four cabins in a row. Hers is the only cabin that stood. The fire completely, and I, my mouth to God's ears, I'm not exaggerating. 
the fire went all the way around and did not touch her place at all. I mean, th there's, there's no explanation. All the glory to the Lord. There's no explanation other than she, we, 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 we called on Lord. We're in covenant. And I want you to think about that. We are in covenant with God. He said no evil, no plague or calamity would cannot come nigh us. When you think about like, it's as though a thousand, 10,000, the war breaks out. But we got to attach our faith to that. And do we believe that? Do we really believe that he could do that for us and that he wants to do that for us? He absolutely wants to do that. And he wants to preserve us. What a testimony is it going to be for each and every one of us when we're provided for, I mean, I absolutely believe that we could see expansion of the loaves and fishes. I mean, you've got a pot of soup and a handful of crackers and there's, you know, in your apartment building, there's eight or 10 people and they're hungry. I mean, one of my best friends here in town, she worked or was a, um, worked or worked with YWAM and she tells me of a story where she had over 20 people come to her house all at once. And she had literally one little tiny, like um, Cornish hen um, for her and her husband and her son. And I think there are a couple other people, hopefully I'm telling the story correct. But I, um, she said, I was just panicking like Lord. I mean, she only had just little bits and pieces of food. And, and she said, how am I going to feed all these people? Because they train missionaries and nobody let them know that there were these 20 something people that were coming in, that they were going to be housing for a while and a lot of young people. And so um, I don't know why, I don't know where they were at to where maybe they couldn't go to the grocery store or something. And she said, they just knelt and prayed and said, Lord, we need you just like you did in the day, Jesus, we need you to multiply this food. And, you know, she has so many incredible stories that well, as well, that builds our faith up. And she said, Lisa, it was unreal. She said, I didn't even know where the chicken, we'd be carving it. And then it was just like chicken would just appear. And she said, everybody at the end just kept on marveling at the multiplication that took place. And she said, you know, for 30 years, it's like they had just started out being uh, missionaries and working with YWAM with Gordon Lindsay. And she said, that so built her faith to believe God for finances in the years ahead. She said, the Lord knew at that moment that we needed to see some kind of miracle because we're like, what are we going to do? I mean, they hadn't gotten, uh, gone around to churches and started getting people to what's the word pledge, you know, that, Hey, I'm going to give you a hundred dollars a month, you know, to help you guys out. I mean, they just went, you know, on a whim. And then all of a sudden, sometimes we'll do stuff like that and we get zealous and they were like, wait a minute, what did I just do? <laughs> and how was God going to provide for me? So, I, I really do. I absolutely believe that we serve such an amazing God that if that's what's needed, that's what he's going to do for us. We're his kids. So the other thing is, is on that note, is we're going to need new wine and new wineskins to go to the next level of where God wants to take you and where he wants to take me. So a couple of weeks ago, he gave me the Hill song. If you guys haven't heard it, it it's a uh, it's an amazing anointed worship song. Lord, make new wine out of me. Make new wineskins. It's a whole nother level of consecrating yourself to the Lord. So if, we need, if we're going to need new wine and new wineskins, we're going to have to be a Mary and not a Martha. We're going to have to sit before the Lord. We're going to have to allow him to take us to another level purge out unbelief, purge out things that, that are not of the spirit and allow him to make those heavenly deposits and, uh, and uh, allow him to, to make new wine so that we can be poured out to those that are around us. I mean, I am going to do a spoiler alert. I hope Jeannie isn't upset with me when I give this spoiler alert, but I'm going to share one thing that I'm going to share at the women's conference. Perfect. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, is my girlfriend, Karen, which hopefully you sometimes soon you get to meet, we're going to start a podcast tomorrow, which I'll share in a bit. Um, 
she was praying into all this. I had told her she's one of my best friends and I had told her what the Lord had told me. It's time to get your house in order and about creating a Goshen, you know, for you and your, your physical body, we're the temple of God and the Lord indwells us and we're his tabernacle, but then in our home and, and we were talking about food and water and what different people are saying and how do you prepare and just getting the mind of the Lord on that. And the Lord took her to an open vision. She was doing dishes at the kitchen sink. It just seems like so many times when the Lord wants to interrupt, do you guys have that happen? You're in the shower, you're on the potty, <laughs> you're just doing, you're doing then dishes or whatever. And just all of a sudden the Lord's like, yeah, I'm going to drop in you know, and speak to you. And she said, I had this amazing open vision. And she said, I was outside of my house and all my neighbors were outside gathering and we were all making exchanges like, oh, do you have some eggs? Oh, do you have flour? Oh, do you have um, a battery for my flashlight? Oh, do you have this? Do you have that? That all the crap was going around on the outside in the world. But she said people who had not talked to um other neighbors and years were all talking to each other. Oh man, I wish I would have talked to you earlier. I'm so sorry. It's taken this catastrophe to talk to you. Others were off somewhere else and they were praying for their neighbors and people were getting healed. And she remembers one lady screaming, oh my gosh, you know, it's a miracle. And, and so she was, she said, the Lord just brought such joy. He goes, he had said to her, do you know what I'm excited about? And that's how it started. Thank you, Holy Spirit. She said, this is what I'm excited about. I'm excited about what my remnant, what the body of Christ is going to do. You know, we are going to be doing so many amazing things for the Lord. And that's where that new wine comes in, right? And that new empowerment, because for everything that's going on and every level, we're going to continue needing to go go up and go into deeper waters and, and have um, a sensitivity to the Holy Spirit like never before to be able to be poured out for these signs and wonders and miracles. And with this 12th hour, every person that's on here, I'm telling you, it's on purpose. It is absolutely on purpose. We were born, I know people say it, it's a cliche, born for such a time as this, but we have been. He, I mean, I believe the cloud of witnesses, I mean, they're cheering us on and looking, oh my gosh, is this the 12th hour ministers that are going to be doing the book of Acts that are going to be finishing this race, that are going to be bringing in the harvest, that are going to be really doing the works of the ministry? I got to tell you, in the last month, I'm so pumped. I am so excited. And I'm looking for opportunities when I'm out in the marketplace and just keeping my eyes peeled out for anybody that I can pray for, anybody that I can encourage. I mean, even smiling nowadays, even getting somebody to look at you eye to eye is a miracle anymore and have them smile or, you know, even open the door for you. So, you know, I want to encourage you guys. I, I hope this has been, and I know I've probably said this a hundred miles an hour of this talk, but um, if you guys have questions, maybe we can do Q and A, but um it is. It's a serious. On one hand, it's a serious time, right? Of course, it is, and I know it's sobering. But at the other hand, it's exciting, and and we need to be excited about how the Lord is going to stretch us and how He's going to use us and how it's going to just build our faith and the intimacy. It says in the last days we're going to be the shining ones. I believe we're going to be shining so bright that it's going to be so evident who are the ones that are the remnant that are walking with the Lord and the ones that are not. We're going to be that city, that lighthouse on a hill. And um, it's just going to be incredible, absolutely incredible. So my, my heart, and I know the Lord's heart for you, is to put away fear, put away any distrust or worry, and just say, Lord, hide me in that secret place. Give me download. Show me how you personally want to get my house in order. What areas in my life? Take that spiritual inventory. 
and trust the Lord. He knows where, where you're at. He knows where you're going. He knows exactly. It's all mapped out how he wants to use you and uh, concentrate on that right now instead of all the stuff that's out there that's woo, swirling all around. Wow. Amazing. Absolutely amazing, Lisa. Now, listen, for all of you that are watching this on YouTube and all that, I'm cutting off the recording now. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed it. But the rest of you hang out and ask Lisa some questions. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys have any, yeah, anything? 